So today I want to go over JavaScript functions, but before getting into the actual coding of a JavaScript function, I want to make sure that we backtrack and talk a little bit about what JavaScript functions are, why we use them, where we might use them, and then also go over kind of comparison to using functions and what we've been doing up until this point. And then at the end of this, I also want to go over a little bit about how you will use this, uh, what we'll learn today as a basic for different kinds of functions, but we'll get into that towards a little bit more towards the end. So as far as JavaScript functions go, up until this point, you've probably been learning how to create variables, how to create uh, JavaScript objects and arrays and saving all of those variables, just dumping it all into one JavaScript file. The same probably goes for creating if else statements, for loops, or any kind of code that you've seen JavaScript is capable of up until this point is probably just living all in one JavaScript file. And we're still gonna be dealing with one file today, but functions is what's going to allow us to wrap those lines of code into little containers and we'll call these containers functions. And by doing so, functions allow us to group certain tasks together inside of JavaScript and call on those tasks to be executed only when the function is called upon. And this should make a little bit more sense once we do look at the lines of code, but I wanted to kind of give you a comparison to what we have been doing versus like why functions are so useful. So that's really all it is. Function is just a way for us to wrap lines of code together and kind of bundle lines of code together so that they all run at the same time um, when they're called upon. Another thing to point out with JavaScript functions and why they are so useful is the fact that we get to reuse functions over and over and over again. So the idea is you create one JavaScript function. Let's say you have a function that loops through an array, um, through every item in an array, and then prints out the item plus a sentence. That's just one example. But you, instead of having to write a for loop every single time you encounter a brand new array, you can just write a function that is going to have the lines of code that will allow you to loop through any array, no matter what the array's length is, and then pass in the different arrays to that one function. Rather than having to write like 10 different for loops, you can write one function that's gonna loop through an array and then have pass in the 10 different arrays um, to that one function. So again, functions really allow us to reuse code instead of having to repeat our code over and over. I think with that, I'm okay to move on to the actual syntax of what a function looks like and what it, um, how you'll actually code a function. So let me move my face. All right. So first I want to go over the syntax of a JavaScript function, and then we'll do an actual example of a function that's going to add two or three numbers together. So starting with the JavaScript keyword function, this function word, that's a JavaScript keyword, meaning that it's a word that JavaScript already has saved in its system. And so whenever we type out function by itself like this, it's going to understand, JavaScript's going to understand that you're saying, hey, JavaScript, I'm about to write a function. So treat this following code as such. So function is a keyword. So you're gonna start with that. And then after that, you're gonna give your function a name. And this name, I think it's important to point out that this name is totally up to you to decide what you wanna name it. Typically you want obviously the name of your function to be related to what the function is actually going to accomplish. But a lot of tutorials and resources out there will have a function name like do something and that's not very descriptive, right? So I did wanna show that you can name your function whatever you want. However, it will be better if you tie that name of your function to the actual like uh, task at hand of what that function will accomplish. Another thing about the name of your function is that it does uh, use camel case, just like, just like when you're naming your variables, you're gonna wanna use camel case for the name of your functions. So those are the first two steps of creating a function, the syntax. The third thing that we're gonna come across are a set of parentheses, right? These parentheses might be blank. They might have some stuff in here. What this parentheses holds is placeholder names, again, names that you get to come up with, 
um, they're placeholder names that are eventually going to be replaced by the actual values that will be used within a function. And I think that will make more sense here in a second when we actually see a live example, but uh, these are called parameters. You can have as few or as many as you want. You don't need parameters. But again, one thing that I think gets really confusing is that people like to name this and the arguments the same, but in reality, we want to make sure that you understand that parameters are just placeholder names. They're just names that you're going to reference to the values that are being brought into a function. The one thing to point out though, is any parameters that go into here, that's how you're gonna have to reference these values inside of your function. Again, so we'll see that in a second here, but parameters, you decide what values are gonna be brought in. This is just a placeholder name and you have to reference these values by the parameter names that you've given them. But as far as like terminology goes, parameters is what you call anything that's being added here inside of these, inside of these parentheses. All right, and the next and probably the most important part is are these curly brackets? Because everything that lives inside of these curly brackets is the actual code that's gonna be executed whenever you call on your function to run. And so here I can, I can say, console.log hello world, or I can have it add numbers together. I can have it loop through an array like I was talking about. Um, really any code that JavaScript has to offer can live inside of a function. And that's what I was talking about when I was saying that your functions allow you to just wrap lines of code together in like little bundles. And so everything that's inside of these curly brackets is going to be the actual code that is executed. One final thing about JavaScript functions that is important to know is that this return keyword is another JavaScript keyword and it's actually going to return you a value or return you something from the function. Return will always give you back whatever you tell it to return. So let's say we are adding two numbers together, which we'll see in a second, but let's say we are adding two numbers together and I want to return the sum of that value. I can do that. And this return keyword, JavaScript keyword is going to tell me exactly what I want when I run this function, what I want back from this function. So a lot of times functions are compared to factories in that you provide all the tools needed um, for this function, this factory, to assemble what you need it to assemble. And then it will go ahead and do its thing. And then at the end of the day, you have a finished product. This is kind of uh, how you can think of functions as well as is a factory you pass in any information that it needs. And then typically you do something with that information and then you return some kind of final product from it. Okay, so this is how you would go ahead and write your function. This right here isn't going to actually execute the code. What is going to execute it is when you call that function to be ran by calling it by its name that you've given it and then passing in any information that you might need in order for this function to run. So you can see that here on line four, I have three parameters. I have parameters go and here, right? And my function is going to return congrats and then it's gonna take those variables that were passed in, those values that were passed in and just return those as well. Congrats, parameters go here. These parameters aren't defined until you execute your code, until you execute your function on line 12 and pass in these three arguments. Um, so if I were to draw, it's almost like you're executing this function and you're passing in u to replace parameter did, my mouse can't get there, will replace go, and then it is what's going to replace here, right? And then you reference those parameters inside of your block of code to execute them, right there. So that's kind of the flow of information happening, but let me show you with an example where we're adding numbers together. So let's say that we want to write a function that's going to add two or three numbers together, right? Let's stick with two. I'm gonna start with that function keyword, give it a name. I'm gonna say add two numbers. Again, this becomes, this starts to be a little bit more descriptive in the naming of my function. It's named to exactly what's happening. Um, those are my parentheses. I know I'm going to need two different numbers in here because I'm gonna to need two numbers to be added together. So I'm gonna say 
I'm going to pass in num1 and num2, open up my curly brackets, and then I'm going to create a variable in here. Let some, I'm just going to create it. And then I want to actually return, uh, sorry, let's do it this way. So we're going to have let sum equals whatever num1 is plus whatever num2 is, okay? And then I want to return the sum. So we know that whatever numbers are going to get passed in here, num1 and num2, those are going to be added together on line 17 and saved to the variable of sum. On line 18, we're going to return that value. So again, this is just writing out our functions. Nothing's happening just yet. I want to go ahead and execute this function, add two numbers. I'm gonna pass in two different numbers. So let's do four and six, and you could expect to see, of course, 10, right? So I'm going to wrap this in a console log. The console log is just for our purpose to see in the console what the actual result is going to be. I'm going to comment this out so we don't get any confusion and run my code. And you can see that it does in fact return 10. So earlier when I said that functions are reusable, I can, I can run this again and pass two different functions. Let me copy this over. And instead of four and six, let's say I want to do three and two, two totally different numbers, right? Here, we should see a result of five. And so when I run this, you can see that I'm getting 10 because this is from line 21 and then five, which is the result of line 22. So one last time, I want to draw out where information is getting passed from and where it's getting uh, passed to. And so this right here, or I guess I could, <laughs> these, two these two different arguments is what's going to get passed in to these parameters right here, right? Those are, those are the values that are going to replace my num1 and my num2. Another thing to point out is that the order in which you place in your arguments is the order that they're going to be taking up and replacing those parameters, right? And then num1 right here and num2 right there is what's going to be then passed down here. So what you can see is that num1 this first time around becomes four. And so you're saying let sum equals four and then num2 comes from the six. So you're saying uh, four and six, let sum equals four plus six and then return the sum of those two numbers. And that's really, that's really it as far as like the basic JavaScript function. Like I said earlier, from here, you can do a lot more with functions. Uh, later in the course, you'll probably learn arrow syntax. You're probably gonna learn how to pass functions inside of other functions. You're gonna learn how to have functions inside of other functions. So not just passed in as a parameter, but actual nested functions. So there's definitely a lot to learn from and grow from from once you do handle these like basic functions, but I think understanding what a basic function looks like and how it works and the syntax of it is going to be crucial to be able to understand functions in the future. So arrow functions, anonymous functions, nested functions, callback functions, all of that fun stuff. But that's it for JavaScript functions, basics 101. I'm assuming we'll do a lot more practice problems with this, but this should be good for now.